Greetings, everyone. I welcome you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he is the only one that can save your soul. Many people think that there's many ways to get to God, and there's many religions that will save you, but there's only one way. And Jesus Christ did not come down here to start a religion. He came down here the first time to die for our sins. And he says to remember his death. Yes, uh, nothing wrong with uh, uh, going and uh, celebrating his birth if that's what you want to do. But you got to realize that, uh, that he didn't just stay a baby in a manger. That he grew up and he lived a holy, sinless life. And then he laid down his life on the cross and took it up again the third day according to scripture. He was born to die. He was the only one that was born to die. And he died for our sins so we could be saved. And we all deserve hellfire. We all deserve to die in our sins. But praise the Lord for his mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord that he is long-suffering and not willing that any should perish. But that all, all means all, friend, all should come to repentance and believe on his only begotten son. Uh, even though there are many, many people that have rejected him and are in hellfire, but he still loves those people to this day. And he, it, it was his desire for all men to be saved and be reconciled with him. So if you're still on this earth and you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is that day of salvation. Amen. So hope you'll trust Jesus Christ today. And so, all right. I know the lighting's pretty bad right here. Uh, maybe I should have done this somewhere else, but uh, we will go ahead and and try to get through this. Amen. So I apologize for the lighting, but uh, let's get started. And we are talking about uh, the topic today is a barrel full of faith. So that will be the topic today. And today is Friday, December 13th, 2019. And it says here in Mark 11, verse 22, and Jesus answering, answering saith unto them, have faith in God. So we need to have faith in God. Amen. All right. And the author for today's devotional is, the initials are RG. That is short for Rick Gravely. And he is the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in uh, Rossville, Georgia. Amen. All right. So he writes here as we start out, he says, uh, an evangelist, H.B. Uh, Gibbard, uh, G-I-B-B-U-D, Gibbard, used to tell of an experience he had with a uh, flour barrel, uh, flour barrel, that's a barrel that you fill flour in. Um, so he said that he had an experience, uh, that he used to tell of an experience he had with a flour barrel. His wife scolded him for his weak faith and challenged him to put his head into the empty barrel and sing the doxology. <laughs> Interesting. <clears throat> Whatever works, amen. All right. They uh, finally agreed to do it together. Hmm. The next day, a grocer called and delivered a, f a full barrel of flour. And it sa he says here, continue on, the only one who knew their need was their heavenly father. Right. So... He probably didn't have to put his head into a, a flower barrel, but okay, if that's what he wanted to do. But uh, uh, praise the Lord that we have God's faith. We have the faith in God, amen, because it's his faith that we, that we go off of. Even though we might have uh, little or no faith, we have his faith. And so his faith keeps us going, amen, even when we don't have any of our own faith, amen. So... Just remember that, that it's his faith that we go by his faith. And yes, we're supposed to have faith in God and, and trust him and stuff. But even when we have no to, uh, no to little faith, uh, little to no faith, sorry, little to no faith, then we know we have his faith if we've trusted him as our savior. Amen. And then uh, he continues on. He says, in my humble opinion, I would think that when Brother Gibbard saw the barrel that he did not see a barrel of flour, but rather a barrel of faith. Hmm. The uh, empty barrel had made room for something greater than flour. It had made room for faith. Amen. All right, well, continuing on, the flour uh, would only supply their physical need, but faith would supply every need. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Another thought to consider in our verse, Jesus tells us to have faith in God, but he is not putting the emphasis on our faith. He is placing the emphasis on God. Amen. That's pretty good. So not, not on the faith, but on uh, the emphasis is on God. Uh, mustard seed faith may be small, but placed in the soil. The seed is strengthened and cultivated until it grows. Our faith may be small, but God isn't. Amen. He certainly isn't. It's the object of our faith that makes it effective. Amen. Praise the Lord. Singing in a barrel may seem foolish to the world and the flesh. However, this little act of faith flourished under the mighty hand of the Creator. Amen. Praise the Lord. God will work if we will have faith in Him. Amen. So let's have faith in God. He will fill our empty barrel if, all, if only we sing the song of faith. Amen. So um, we, our cup can be uh, overflowing. Amen. And not empty. And uh, if we just have faith and trust Jesus more and more each and every day and every moment. So let's have faith in God and trust him and know that he keeps us and he helps us and guides us as we desire for him to. And we should always let him rule and reign in our life, even though we tend not to. And we just go about our day not even thinking about him half the time. And we should always have him in the forefront of our mind. And he should always be the one that rules and reigns and directs and guides our daily life as Christians. If you are a born-again believer, that is. And if you're not, well, today is the day that you need to trust Jesus. And then he will help you through the rest of it. All right. So... That is the end of the topic on Barrel of Faith. So let's uh, learn to have faith in God and trust Him in everything and go to Him in prayer and ask Him for guidance and directions on each and everything that we do and make sure that He is always the one that uh, uh, guides us and directs us and not the flesh or the devil or this world and always go to Him for decisions and and see what he has to say, and go to his word, and read it, and study it, and see what he has to say about uh, living that Christian life while you're here on this earth. Amen? All right, well, now let us jump into the morning Bible reading, and we will be in Revelation chapter 5. So, uh, Revelation chapter 5, we just talked about being caught up in the air to be uh, be with the Lord, and now... Uh, the church has been caught up, and now it's going to get rough. <laughs> so, let us uh, read Revelation chapter 5. Praise the Lord that we won't have to go through uh, any of this stuff, because the tribulation time is not for us. Yes, we have our own personal tribulations and trials and stuff in life, but that's just part of life. But the Lord will get us to the other side if you're saved. And praise the Lord. Be thankful that you don't have to go through this stuff. Amen. And, uh... If you're uh, lost today, then you may end up going to this stuff, but you can uh, trust Jesus as your Savior and, and, and be saved, amen, and go be with Him in heavenly places for all eternity. All right, so let's get into Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1. And he says, And I saw, this is John speaking, And I saw in the right hand of Him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? So all this stuff is literal and less uh, otherwise. So what the Bible says is what the Bible says. Amen. So let's not try to interpret it our own way. What it says is what it says. Amen. <clears throat> all right. Verse 3. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, amen, the Root of David, hath prevailed to uh, open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Amen. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain. This is Jesus Christ being spoken of here. 
that he saw, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, set forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, uh, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. So there you go. That's uh, talking about uh, if you trust Jesus, he shed his blood, and was slain for us. And so if you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, praise the Lord. Uh, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us, un and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So this is uh, talking about anybody that has trusted Jesus as their savior, that one day will be kings and priests reigning on the earth. Amen. And I beheld, and I uh, heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it's all about Jesus. We're worshiping him. So let's worship him right now and praise him right now. Amen. And Remember, one day we'll be worshiping and praising him in heavenly places when we get caught up, either in the air or if you uh, die first and go be with him that way. Praise the Lord. So there you have it. That is uh, um, the Lamb of God who will open up the books. Amen. And next time we will be getting into uh, the seals and all that stuff. So... Hope you'll join me next time for that, and if you're interested in learning more about the book of Revelation, Brother James is doing a series on YouTube right now on the book of Revelation, and he's uh, already gone through chapter 1, and he's uh, got chapter 2 uh, posted up there all the way to chapter 2. I'm not sure what lesson he's on right now, but uh, you can go and listen to all those lessons from the beginning, and I encourage you to do so because they're good lessons, and if you're, especially if you... Uh, are having a hard time understanding the book of Revelation. It's a good series to watch because a lot of people misinterpret the book of Revelation and try to make it their own thing and try to interpret uh, the scripture in Revelation the wrong way and start making up crazy stuff about, you know, the the locusts are helicopters and this and that and all this other crazy stuff. But the Bible says what the Bible says and what it talks about here, if it's uh, talking about something certain, that's what it's talking about, and it's literal, unless uh, otherwise, amen? So, uh, that would be a good series to watch if you're having a hard time with the book of Revelation and understanding it. And you can go find those uh, sermons on the YouTube page by typing in James Knox Sermons, or Bible Baptist Church, or Book of Revelation Series Study, or uh, something along those keywords, or you can go to the church website at www.jameswnox.org and find it that way. Amen. All right. Well, that will wrap it up for today's uh, devotional study and Bible reading. So I hope you'll join me tomorrow for the topic on, are you a Bible scholar? Hmm. Are you a Bible scholar? No, I don't believe any of us are, are really. I mean, because we're still learning and studying it and we don't, and we don't know it all. And the day that you think that you know it all, that's a dangerous day, friend, because we're always learning and studying and growing. And if you come to that point where you don't think you need to grow anymore, then that's it. You're done. So hope you'll 
realize that uh, that the Bible is a big book and there's lots to learn from it. And you might have uh, learned something a certain way already. And if that way is not the correct way or you're being taught the wrong way, well, go back and study it again because we're always to be learning and growing in God's Word. And I still don't understand every single part of it to this day. I mean, I believe it and I know it's true even though I don't fully understand it. So if you get that haughty spirit, that proud spirit, and say, oh, well, I went to Bible school, and I graduated, and I know everything about God's Word, and, and I know it all, and, and I don't need to study anymore, and I don't need to grow, and so that's where you're, that's where you're in trouble, friends. So just realize you need to humble yourself and let the Lord continue to teach you and guide you and direct you into all truth amen so uh hope you hope you haven't gotten to that point and hope you never get to that point to where you think that you uh know it all and that you don't need to be taught anymore and that you don't need to learn anything else about god's word and what god says amen so uh hope you'll realize that we're always to be learning studying in this book amen and don't ever get to that place where you don't think you need need to grow anymore or learn anymore. Amen. Because we all still need to learn to this day. And it's always good to back, go back and get a refresher also. Amen. All right. Well, that will wrap it up for today. So may the Lord richly bless you and hope you all have a great and wonderful rest of your Friday. And remember, only Jesus Christ can save your soul. And so hope you'll trust him today. As the Bible says in Acts chapter 16, when Paul and Silas and the uh, Philippian jailer were together, and he asked them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. So I hope you'll trust him today. And he's the only one that can save your soul, as I said earlier. And no religion can save you. There's not many ways to get to God. There's one way. Jesus Christ. If there is many ways, then what Jesus Christ did on the cross would have been in vain, and there would have been no no need for him to come down here and die for our sins if there was many ways to get to God. But he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by him. Amen. All right, well, this is Brother Scott signing off, and see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.